Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, I'm going to be teaching you a 12 bar blues that's played entirely with single notes. Well, almost entirely. There's a couple bars that has you strumming one chord, but I digress. So needless to say, this is going to be a great piece for those of you who want to work on developing your picking technique as well as increasing picking speed because I think this is a song that sounds really, really cool when played at a brisk or a fast tempo. So with that said, let's take a step back and let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you the entire piece, but if you want to get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's going to be available at this link right here, or you can go to this site, rockclass101.com, do a search for finger picking etude number 34. Now also on that page will be the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So this is a great feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this tune that much easier. So before we jump into this lesson, there's a few things we need to touch on. The first one is that you can use either a low G ukulele or a high G ukulele for this song. Both tunings work, so pick whichever one you want to. Now the second thing I wanna talk about is our right hand picking technique, because this is a tune that there is really no right or wrong method to use, but I'm gonna highlight two methods that you can use. The first one is going to be the alternate picking technique. So in my hand, I'm holding a pick, uh, which is usually what uh, guitar players do. And at the point of when I'm recording this lesson, I have not seen Evan's performance yet, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that he's probably going to be using a picking technique that mimics what it looks like to hold a pick. So if I get rid of this pick, but I pretend to hold an invisible pick, you can see that the tip of my index finger is sticking out a little bit. That's gonna allow me to use that tip of my index finger to do alternate picking. So I imagine that's probably a technique that Evan's going to be using in the lesson. Now, if you're not a fan of doing that, if you've never done it before, no worries. I'm not the biggest fan of doing that on the ukulele. Instead, what I'm gonna be using is piccato picking, which is fancy terminology that just means alternate picking. So that means that I'm gonna be using these two fingers, leading with my middle, following with the index. So that would look like. Now piccato picking is really great when you have melody lines that fall across one string. So for example, if I had a melody line that was open, second, third, second, open, just all on the A string. If I have to play that at a pretty fast tempo, it's much more efficient for my right hand to do that piccato picking than to go one finger, going pluck, 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 pluck. It's easier for me to go boom, 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 boom alternate picking with piccato technique. Now, if you're new to piccato picking, you wanna go ahead and jump into our flamenco lessons called La Gitanita. This one is a really cool tune that teaches that technique, plus another one, the Raschiato strum. It's a barrel roll strum. So you get to learn two really cool techniques in that lesson. So if you wanna jump into piccato picking more detail, check out that lesson. I'll link it in the description box below. Now, the third thing I wanna to touch on real quick is that this is a 12 bar blues. If you are new to understanding the blues, then jump into our lesson that covers the form to a T. So you know which chord happens at what point in those 12 bars. So I'll link that lesson in the description box below. And last but not least, it is the blues. That means we have to play it with a swung rhythmic fill. If you're new to understanding the difference between playing with a straight eighth note fill versus a swung eighth note fill, you want to jump into our lesson that covers that to a T as well. I'll link that in the description box too. All right, that covers everything. Let's go ahead and jump into learning this piece of music. Let's put up the first two bars of tab and let me go ahead and play it for you so we can hear what it sounds like. Okay, so the first thing we wanna look at is that we see everything is all eighth notes. 
But remember, you got to play with that swung rhythmic fill. Now, the second thing we're going to notice just by looking at these two bars is that every note is doubled. So look at the very first note. It's the open C. You play it twice. Look at the next one. It's the four on the C string. You play it twice. Look at the next one. It's the seven also on the C string. You play it twice. And then five on the E string. You play it twice. And if you keep going into the second measure, same thing. So you're going to play every single note back to back. All right, so those two little tips, eighth notes and playing each note two times, is going to make learning and memorizing this that much easier. So let's go ahead and start with playing the open C two times. Use your index finger to play four on string three two times. Use your pinky to play seven on string three two times. And then use your index, drop it down to five on string two. You guessed it, two times. So that first measure we have. All right, let's go ahead and continue on to measure number two. Now, here's the thing. I want you to keep your index finger anchored on five because we're gonna come right back to that note. So go ahead and add your middle finger to six on string two. Lift it up, back to five. Then use your ring to go to seven on string three, and then back to five on string two. So watch my index, you see how it just stays anchored. So that entire time I'm playing measure number two, my index finger does not lift up. So if we put everything together, one into two, sounds like this. Let's see if we can try that. You and I. So we have ba da 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 one two ready go. Very nice. Let's try it one more time. Same speed. One two ready go. Very nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening in measure number three and four. So if we just glance at three and four, we're gonna go ahead and see that, hey, this looks very familiar. It's an exact copy of what we did in measure one and two. So for these first four bars, you're literally just playing one and two again. So you've got it two times in a row. So pretty simple to start us off. Now let's take a look at what happens in measure five and six. So in measure five and six, we're playing out of the four chord, which is the F chord. So let's go ahead and make this shape that we're playing out of. We're gonna take our middle finger, put it on five on string three, ring finger underneath, that's five on string two, and then our index finger is three on string number one. So just go ahead and take a second to make sure that all three notes are ringing out. And for playing measure five on its own, we're just going to be arpeggiating this chord, going straight down it. So we're gonna play string three twice, string two twice, string one twice, and then I want you to lift second and third finger up and use your middle finger to grab five on string one. And we're gonna play that one twice. So if we put it together, we have this. Okay, let's go ahead and continue on. Same thing as we saw going from measure one into measure two. We wanna keep some fingers held down throughout this. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep my index and my middle finger planted because we're gonna come right back to those notes. So go ahead and take your ring finger, put it on six on string one. We play that twice. Back to five, back to one. And then instead of going back to our middle finger for the fifth fret, I want you to use your ring finger. Okay, so this measure six looks like, if I call it the fingers, I have ring, middle, index, ring. And I'm gonna tell you why we're using our ring finger there when we get to measure nine and 10. But for right now, let's go ahead and put everything together. Sounds like that. So let's try this instead. Let me play it once through, and then I want you to come in for the second time. Nice, 
this. How did you do? Now, if it was a little bit too fast for you, you can always use that cog in the YouTube player to slow it down to a tempo that's better suited for you. But let's go ahead and keep moving on. Let's take a look at what happens in measure number seven and eight. So seven and eight looks eerily familiar again because it's the same thing we did in measure one and two, which again was the same thing we did in measure three and four. So we already know how to play seven and eight. Let's go ahead and move forward to measure nine and 10. Now looking at measure nine and 10, this is where we go from our five chord to our four chord or G to F. Let's go ahead and skip measure nine. Let's take a look at measure 10. If we look at measure 10, we're gonna notice that it's identical to what we just played in measure number five. So we already know how to play this bar. It was that F triad that we're just literally arpeggiating our way down. Now, here's the cool thing. If we look at measure nine, you can see that we're playing out of G. So take this F chord shape, just move it up a whole step, so it becomes seven, seven, five, middle ring index. And I want you to use the exact same left hand and right hand picking pattern with one key difference. Remember how I said that I wanted you guys to end measure six playing that seventh fret with your ring finger? That's what I want you to use right here. I want you to go middle ring index ring because when we go into measure 10, we need our middle finger to be free so that it can grab that top note on the third string. Okay, so you want to end this ninth bar, the last two notes, using your ring finger. So take a look at how nine into 10 looks with my ring finger being used. Freeze up my middle. So that's the trick right there. You gotta use that ring for the last two hits of seven in that ninth bar. Let's see if we can try nine going into 10, keep it nice and steady. So we have one, two, ba, ba. Beautiful. Now, Let's take a look at what happens to end our first 12 bar blues. So 11 and 12. If we look at measure 11, we're gonna notice it's identical to measure one. So let's skip over that and let's look at what happens in measure number 12. Measure number 12, we've got a little bit of syncopation. So if we put up these rhythm hits, we can see that we have literally hitting on the ends of one, ends of two, ends of three. That's gonna be the tricky part in this measure. So that sounds like one and 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 four and ba da 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 da. So think about where we left off in measure 11. Left off playing five on string two with your index finger. That leads us perfectly to use middle finger to play six on string number two and then ring finger to play seven on string number two. So you're walking up chromatically for the tail end of measure 11 going into the beginning of measure 12. So go ahead and start with the middle finger on six, string two, then use your ring finger to play seven on string two. And then I want you just to slide that ring finger up to eight. And we're gonna hit that four times in a row, but the key thing here is to play it with the correct rhythm. So, ba, 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 da. Calling it out, we have and, and, four, and. Putting it together, just six by itself. One, and, 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 four, and. So if we try it together, just six by itself. Three, four, one, and, 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 four, and. If I put 11 into 12, I have this. Let's try it again. Ready, go. So again, this is one that's a little bit tricky because of that syncopation. Try to sing it out. Because if you can sing it, you can play it. But that's going to give us everything for our first 12 bars.
So let's do this. Let's take a listen to Evan playing through everything at full speed, and then we'll come back and jump into the next 12 bars. So going into our next 12 bars, let's go ahead and take a look at measure number 13 and 14. So for these two bars, we have a little bit of percussion added to the mix. Let me go ahead and play it for you guys first and then we'll break it down and learn it. So it sounds like this. So that's a good gist of what it sounds like. Let's take just this first bar, measure 13. Now, if we look at measure 13 on its own, we can see that we are playing three notes. We have either an eight on string two or a six to seven on string one. And if you look at measure 14, you can see the same thing. It's either the eight on string two or a six to seven on string one. So we're only playing three notes. That's gonna make this a lot easier uh, to grasp and to memorize if we recognize that off the bat. Now, going back to just 13, we can see that we're gonna hit it two times. We're gonna hit that eight as a quarter note two times. So we have one, two. Then we're gonna do the hammer on six to seven. So go ahead and use your index to your middle finger. So for eight, I'm using my ring. And then first to second for six to seven. Okay, so I have one, two, three, and. At this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down with a slap. Now, a slap is different than a chunk. A slap is to come directly down this way. A chunk follows the motion of a strum where we're going down this way. So for a slap, you wanna come directly down and hit the body. But look where my thumb is. When I come down for this slap, my thumb is literally going to be in position to pluck string two. So when I come down, I'm in position to pluck string two because right after I do the slap, I have to pluck that eighth fret one more time. So watch my thumb as I come down. Let me go ahead and play 13 by itself. Okay, let me go slower than that. One more time. So that's key is that you come down with the slap in position to pluck with the thumb on string two. Now, if you're new to doing the slap technique, I'm gonna put a link in the description box below to a lesson that I made quite a few years ago that covers the technique in greater detail. I'm also gonna link a lesson on chunking technique because it's different than the slap technique. So if you need an overview on that technique, I'll link that in the description box as well. All right, let's see if we can try 13 by itself. So we have ba, 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 da, sap, eight. Here we go, ready, go. Nice. Now this last note that we just plucked on the end of four, it's gonna get tied into beat one of the next measure. And then we're gonna hit it two more times, but it's being hit on the ends. So the end of one and the end of two. So again, we're seeing that syncopation where we're plucking on the ends. So you wanna either count this out or sing it. So if I was to sing it, ba, 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 da, 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 right? If I was to count it, one, two, three, ends, and, and, and. Either method works. Pick the one that helps you fill it more naturally. Okay, let's see if we can try that together. So we have ba, 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 da, ba, ba, ready, go. Now to finish it up, we're gonna go ahead and do six to seven again. That falls on beat three end. And then here's where we're going to do chunk and then follow with a muted up strum. So that's gonna be beat four and the end of four. So if I put everything together, sounds like that. So let's see if we can try it two times in a row. I will play it once, you come in for the second time. It 
So that's a good gist of what these two measures sound like. Let's go ahead and jump into the next two. So if we look at 15 and 16, look at just 15 by itself, you're going to notice that it is identical to measure 13 except for the very last note. The very last note, we are not playing 8 on string 2. Instead, we are playing 13 on string 1. So when you go up to 13 on string 1, grab it with your ring finger. So this first measure here sounds like this. Okay, if we try together, ba 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 da da. Here we go. Ready, go. Nice. So pretty simple because it's literally the same thing with a slight variation at the very end. Now that 13, you're going to hold that into beat one of the next measure, and then you're going to hit it four more times. So we have and two and three. So I would count it out rhythmically instead of going one, two, three, four, just so you know where you're at in the music. And two and three. Then we're going to walk down to 12 and then to 10. Okay, so and two and three and four. Sounds like that. Now, putting it into context, I think, is the best way to practice this. So that means playing 15 into 16. Sounds much more musical and a complete phrase when we do two bars at a time. Let's see if we can try that together. Ba, ba. Ba da 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 da. Nice. So these opening four bars of theme number two, if I put them together, it's going to sound like this. So that's at a pretty brisk tempo, but it's very, very cool once you get it down. So this adds a little bit of percussion and a lot of groove to our 12 bars. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens next. So we're going to look at measure 17 and measure 18. So off the bat, we're going to see something familiar. This is the same stuff we played in measure 5 and 6. So we know how to do that. Let's take a look at the next two. Same thing. This is the same measures we played for measure seven and eight. Let's take a look at the next two. Again, same thing. This is the same stuff we played for measure nine and 10. So we just had two, four, six bars in a row of repeats from our first 12 bars. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's left to learn for this second 12 bars. And that is measure 23 and 24. So here we have something new. This is what these two bars sound like. So a cool little bluesy lick to end us off with. So the key thing here is that you are resting on beat one. So you don't play anything on beat one. You're going to come in on the end of one. And we're going to go ahead and do that same little walk down we did just previously in this lesson, which was 13, 12, 10. So same fingers, ring, middle, index. Now here's where the change happens. We can use middle fingers to do a pull off 12 to 10 on string one, and then use that middle finger again to play 11 on string two and ring finger 12 on string two. So if I put that together, sounds and looks like that. Let's see if we can try that together. Remember, start on the end of one. Three, four, one. Beautiful. Going into our last measure, we're gonna go ahead and play 10 on string one, and then 12 on string one, and then move up with that ring to 15. And you can see we're gonna hit it four times in a row, but the key thing here is where we hit it. So we're hitting it on the end of two, the end of three, four end which sounds like that. Now, if I count it out, just 24 by itself, sounds like this. One and, and, and four and. So you wanna get that da 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 da. You wanna get that rhythm stuck in your head. Ba da 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 da. 
If you can sing it, you can play it. Let's try it together. Da 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 da. So here we go. Ready, go. Nice. And if I put 23 into 24, I have one, two, three, four rests. Very, very cool. A fun little way to end the second 12 bars. So that's everything for theme number two. The bulk of your practice is going to be in the opening four measures. Then more than half of this, or literally half of this is repeats from our first 12 bars. And then we have that cool little blues lick at the end. So at this point, let's go ahead and take a listen to Evan playing through all of these 12 bars, and then we'll come back and learn the last 12 bars. So jumping into our last 12 bars, here's where we switch things up. The opening two bars is going to be strumming a chord. We have one chord. Now, you can see on the tab that it is a full bar chord, which means we have to fret across all four strings. I, for one, like to be lazy. I'm gonna be completely honest. So I'm gonna use an alternative fingering. I'm just going to bar across strings one, two, and three on that 12th fret add my ring finger to 15. In essence, I'm going to ignore string number four. Now, if you hit string four while you're strumming, it's fine. That G note is in the chord, so it's not going to clash. But see if you can target your down and up strums to avoid hitting string number four. So with that said, let's take a look at just measure 25. If we look at 25, we can see that we are starting out by playing this C chord three times in a row as quarter notes. So it starts off really simple. Down, down, down. Okay, so give me three down strums. One, two, three. And you can hear that I'm putting a little bit of a staccato pop on them. Pop, pop, pop. So popping the first two, letting the third hit ring out. So that's just an example of how you can stylistically jazz this little section up. Up to you, you can let it ring out if you prefer, but I think the pop, pop, sustain sounds really neat for the opening. If you look at beat four, we're gonna come down with a chunk and then we're going to come up with an upstrum. So this first measure right here, measure 25, sounds like this. Very simple, right? One, two, three, four, end. So one, two, three, chunk up. Try it with me. Ready, go. One, two, three, chunk up. Now you're going to hold this up strum into beat one of the next measure. And then you're going to give me another up strum, followed by a chunk and a muted up strum. So let's see if we can add that to the mix. So let's play from 25 up to the first half of 26. Sounds like that. You and I try. Three, four. Okay, to finish up this measure, we're gonna come down with a strum on beat three, and then again, a chunk and a muted up strum. So putting the entire thing together, sounds and looks like that. Let's try you and I. Three, four. So a really, really neat reprieve from playing just all single notes throughout this tune. We've got a little bit of strumming happening. And when you get it down at a fast, it sounds really, really neat. So let's go ahead and take a listen and a look <laughs> at what our next couple bars are having us do. And for measure 27 and 28, we have something new. 
we are going to be doing a very cool blues lick. So really cool. Ba, 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 da, da, a really cool lick that we have right here. If we look at the first measure, all quarter notes, so we're gonna walk ourselves down a melody on the first string, 15, 13, 12, 10. So you can use the ring to the middle, to the index, to the index. Those are some good finger choices, but anything really works for this. You can go down with the ring and then follow with middle and index. Doesn't really matter too much. Just choose whatever feels comfortable for you. But if we put that together, we have one, two, three, four. Let's try that. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. Pretty simple, right? Going into the next measure, we are going to eighth notes. Okay, so go ahead and keep your index finger planted on that 10th fret. We're gonna come back to that note. I want you to use your middle finger to play 11 on string two, then use the ring to play 12, then go back and play 10 on string one, which our index finger is anchored, and move your ring up to 12 on string three. So you have, let me clean that up. Nice. So if we put that two bars together, we have, let's try that, you and I. Ba, 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 da, da, da. Go. Nice. So very fun. So I would probably practice these first four bars together, sounds like this. Just practice that, because that's, I think, is gonna be the most challenging part of these last 12 bars. So same thing as we saw in theme two or the second 12 bars, the opening four measures are probably the ones you're gonna to have to practice the most, because if we look at what happens next, this is measure 29 and 30, we're gonna go ahead and see that that's the same thing we did in measure five and six. If we look at 31 and 32, identical to measure seven and eight. If we look at 33 and 34, identical to measure nine and 10. So the same thing, we've got the same six bars repeating again. And that leaves us with the last two measures of the 12 bar blues, which is 35 and 36. If we look at this, we're gonna notice something though. We're gonna notice it looks very familiar, but there's two variations that are happening. Let me go ahead and put a red box around these two variations. Let's start with the last measure, 36. You can see that you are playing a chord on the end of two, and that chord is the same C chord that we just played a few minutes ago. The difference here from measure 24, which this is literally a copy of, is that you're playing that chord on the end of two, and that's it. The rest of what you played in measure 24, you're not doing because you're cutting it short to end the tune. Then if we look at the previous bar, 35, this is gonna be identical to measure uh, 23. The only difference here is that we are jazzing up what happens on beat two. We have a 16th note triplet on beat two to give us a little bit of pizzazz for the ending. So if I play these two bars together, again, they're literally the same as 23 and 24, just with two variations thrown in. Sounds like this. Really, really cool, especially when you get it to tempo. So remember, we're starting with a rest on beat one, and then we're going to go ahead and play 13 on string two, and here's where we have the change. We're going to do a quick hammer-on pull-off, 12, 13, 12. So middle to ring, but it's fast. After that, you're gonna pull off to 10. So what you really wanna practice is that in and of itself. So the hammer-on, pull-off, pull-off. Sounds like that if we add the first note. So very, very fast. The rest of the measure is what we did before. So playing 12, 10, 11, 12. Same thing with the next one, 10, 12. And instead of just playing 15 by itself, you're gonna bar that chord and pluck it. So if I was to play 23 and 24, 
it was that if I play as you see on the tab here. It's just a slight little variation. So we're literally just adding pizzazz in that first measure and ending on the end of two in the second measure. So this is a couple bars that I would just recommend hitting pause and just practicing on your own because they are really, really tough. So I think we'll skip the play along for this last couple bars just because they're hard with that crazy hammer on pull off lick that's happening. But that's everything for this lesson, guys. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's take a listen to Evan playing the last 12 bars and then we'll come up, we'll come back and we'll wrap this video up. Alright guys, so we learned how to play a 12 bar blues, not once, not twice, but three times. So the cool thing about this lesson is that we had a lot of repetition. We had about 20 bars that repeat, and that means that we only had about 16 measures that we actually had music where we had to learn something new. So that's always a fun thing because it makes learning longer pieces of music less daunting because there's a lot of repetition, which means there's less for us to actually have to sit down and learn. So it makes it less daunting, but it also makes it a little bit easier to learn. Now this is a really cool piece for working on playing the blues, developing your picking technique, developing picking speed, and just working on groove and fill, because those are two aspects of blues music that, well, blues has those two aspects in spades. So this was a really fun lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed learning it with me. I wanted to give you a friendly reminder before we wrap up that if you did want to get the tabs to print off and keep for your records, that was available at this link right here. Or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for finger picking etude number 34. Don't forget too, on that page was the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So you can literally hit play, watch that tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed learning this tune and we will catch you in the next lesson. Take care.